Hello, everyone. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University. This is the introduction to drawing for designers class. Um, today, we're going to sketch some cubes. Um, it's the third drawing of the uh, spring semester 2021. Okay, so I have a few things here which are either real cubes or things that are close to a cube, like a box of goldfish, which we're going to actually draw later uh, either next week or the following week um, so i guess it, it, you could say it's a good thing to know to draw cubes because it's you know it's such a basic shape and it's uh you know our rooms are cubic <laughs> our shipping boxes are cubic anyway it's a it's a very common shape so um before i we get into it though i'm just gonna um, introduce the concept of projections. And this is already in many other videos that you'll see um, throughout the semester. But um, so the idea is that a drawing is really but a meeting of some lines that come from an object, which is really reflected light and hit a particular plane. Um, so they're projected from that object to the plane. So in general, what we see is, you know, a projection of, of, of an object going into our eyes uh, via the light, of course, light rays and creating an image in the back of our eye in the retina upside down. We got two eyes, it's a little complicated, but, um, but the, uh, the projection plane doesn't necessarily have to be, um, how should I say, um, when we look, doesn't have to be behind, which is, you know, when we look, it's behind our lens, but it could be also in front. Uh, and that's, that's what happens when we draw on a window, for example. So if I take this cube and I try to align these three lines now, not necessarily the sides because this is a little too big. Um, so these three lines that we're seeing drawn are a projection of those three lines. And the thing to remember is that while these three lines are all basically on the same plane, right, on this sheet, these three lines are not, right? So there is some kind of equivalency between three-dimensional object, the lines that put the edges in this case, and what we draw, okay? And we just take it for granted that that's, oh, that's a picture of a cube because we're used to it, um, okay? So this is the most common um, view of a cube in oblique view or axonometric view. And in particular, this is called isometric because the angles are all the same. Okay, these three angles, um, it's basically an hexagon, right? Split into three parts. Um, so anyway, real quick, there's three types of projections. We have parallel projections where an object is projected onto a plane and it's, and, and everything is parallel. The plane, the planes on the object and the lines are orthogonal to the object. So what you get when you project this thing that way is you get a square pretty much if you place the object exactly facing the, facing your drawing surface and oops this is not so oh, there we go actually yellow and yellow so we have what's called orthographic projections and this is not exactly this cube is something else but um this could be the top view of my cube this could be the front and this could be the side view right so what that means is that when okay now this should be transparent but if i put this cube here Okay, when I project it to the various sides and I actually should be looking from the other side to get the, um, let's see, uh, front top. Yeah, actually it's like that, right? This would be like this. So that's the top, this is the front and this is the side. Um, and for practicality, what we do is we take these three views and then we just flatten them out like so. Okay, that's, so that's a orthographic projection, the first uh, kind. 
Um, the second kind is when we take this object, okay, and rather than making it parallel to the three planes, we twist it somehow. Or we keep that object straight and we twist the planes. The two are equivalent, but what we get when we do that, we get this kind of representation where we start to see um, more than one side. Okay, so that's that's called again axonometric. So that's number two. The trick there is the lines are always parallel. Okay, so even though when I look at this cube now, because of well, the camera that's looking at it, it's you know kind of simulates the eye. You can see that the lines are sort of converging. Right. Let's take a. Um, this is not. Let's see, yeah, this is, needs to be further away. But anyway, these lines are, you know, receding a little bit. But really, for our purposes, for axonometric and isometric, we want to use those lines as being parallel, not, uh, not converging. So that, so like here, um, while I have no problem, um, because they're going into the middle, matching, oops, matching the, uh, the top three, the other sides are kind of parallel, but not quite. Um, so we don't make a perspective, in other words, but a perspective, in fact, is when the lines converge, okay, into some point, um, some vanishing point, okay, in this case, two, two points, uh, left and right, um, you can also have a one point perspective, right, so just one vanishing point and all the other lines are parallel. So this may be an empty cube, for example, okay? So real quick, those are the three kinds and really there aren't any other kinds. Well, in, for our practical purposes of designs, this is enough. Um, so, but now let's turn to, yeah, to drawing some cubes in what we could call oblique or um, axonometric, isometric, and then if we move the angles, it's not isometric anymore. Um, it's something else. So I'm going to keep using my really nice soft pencil and uh, and sharpen it. And now I'm actually going to do, as I did before, the title block, because I think it's, again, really important. And it's good exercise for me as well. So I've got my little old Kodak film board here. And I'm just going to quickly, so you could probably skip this part, but you can't skip it in your assignment, right? You have to do it. Um, meaning skip this part in the video because you've already seen it. But I'm going to do it again for those who might be maybe not in the class and joining from, I don't know, some other part of the world. So you take your, your pencil, you set the distance. Let's see if I can get half inch this time correct by moving your middle finger up and down towards the tip of your pencil, lining it up against the edge. That's too much. Okay, I think that's going to be good. Oops. Make sure you line up your paper. Make sure you take a board that's not sharp. Otherwise you cut your, your finger and I'm timing it again. And last time we spent about four minutes doing this. So you shouldn't skimp on it, okay? Um, this pencil is really dark, but that's okay. I'm, I'm not gonna be, you know, work with what you have most of the time. Um, I got distracted there. It's actually hard to talk and draw at the same time. You know, actors are good at that, doing many things at the same time. I'm not a very good actor. Anyway, now I'm gonna try to hit three quarters. Then I'm gonna do two really light lines. And speed sometimes is your friend, you know, because you just, it's fresher and it's, it's quick. And even if it's not perfect, it has that freshness. Um, so 
Uh, all right, let's write down what it is. is. So this is number three. I think it's called sketch cubes. Uh, let's see, student name here. This pencil is really soft. <laughs> student name. Uh, let's just say my last name. Drogo, that's 220, slow down because I'm going too fast. Um, maybe SFSU, there. And then January 24th, 2021. Okay, nice, great. I don't have to worry about the title block anymore. Um, unless of course I completely mess up, right? But we're not, we're not going there. It's especially these drawings, you can't really mess up. So um, if you do and you have to redo the title block, okay, well, you have to do, redo the title block. In fact, what I would do now actually is not work on this because it is true that you could do three or four or five different sketches, but then it'll have a really hard time grading too many things. So one sheet, one grade, um, but you could practice on another sheet, right? So why don't I do that now um, and, uh, and practice on another. Now, at first you, you do wanna kind of work a little lighter. So I think my pencil right now is really a little too soft to get, to get started. Um, so I'm gonna use a little harder, which is really, let's see. Yeah, a little better. Um, so what we what we should do is try to start start with this scheme, okay? Where your cube is all is it's got all the same angles, and um, and you're trying to match making those angles the same, okay? So basically, if you had a pie, let's say, and you split it exactly, you know, like or a pizza. Um, is played exactly in three parts. These are the angles that you would be referring to, okay? This is 120 degrees, 120, 120. If you had a, uh, you know, if you had a, a protractor, you could measure it and you would, you would see that's exactly a third of your circle. Um, so to do that, you could move your arm this way, but again, you know, maybe it's useful to move the paper or maybe, to get the angle, general angle right first. Um, why don't I try to match that? So maybe I do this. So once I do that, maybe maybe then I move it. Um, and I try to do two the same. And I'm, I'm gonna go really light now, okay? Now I know my vertical is gonna be vertical. So I could maybe move it like this. And you see how these align, right? So now maybe I can move it like that. And these two triangles basically are equilateral, the same. Um, now try different things, try moving the paper, maybe try without moving the paper. Um, okay, that's your basic isometric cube. Um, and then you could once, if you like it, you could reinforce it a little bit um, by darkening the lines and try not to do, try not to do your lines like perfectly even and because they get a little stiff looking. Um, so try to maybe lift your pencil. I have many, many other videos talking about this. So now in the interest of time, I'm going to, I'm going to speed up a little bit and just just kind of, okay, once you get your basic, then you can. Um, now, the one drawback of the um, isometric is that in fact, because everything is perfectly centered, this center point in front is going to correspond to the center in the, I mean, to the corner in the back. So if I wanted to now draw kind of a little bit of transparent cube, it's a little hard because I mean, you can, but it looks like an hexagon, right? So it is true that if you draw your cube with angles slightly different, 
Okay, so maybe this drops a little bit and this goes up a little bit. So perhaps you have, you know, a little bit shallower here, a little bit steeper there. Uh, then you could get a cube that's a little more, um, I, I don't want to use the word 3D, that's weird. Now, when you do this, this side is going to shorten a little bit, okay? Um, you could try without shortening first and see what happens. Okay, so this is shallow, this is deeper. If I keep it the same length, you can see it starts to look a little too long. So I need to shorten it a little bit. Anyway, in this case, now I can make a cube that is, um, you know, a little more uh, recognizable, right? Of course, as designers, we can always do this. We can say cube and everybody's gonna believe it's a cube, even if it's not. Which is another way of saying that actually every drawing is actually an abstraction. I mean, really, even drawings of concrete things, not abstract things like love or sadness, rather cube or eraser, a picture of that is still abstract because it's not the real thing, right? It's, this is the real thing and this is, a representation of it looks like it, but it's still an abstraction. Um, so remember that. In other words, don't feel bad if your drawings are not like perfect. Um, okay, so you can play, you can do a few with this perfect angle, a few with this angle, maybe moving it the other way. Again, don't worry about doing perspective. Okay, let's not worry about perspective um, for now. Let's do um, just parallel lines, okay? So in other words, they're not gonna meet ever, ever in the universe or they meet at infinity as they say. Um, so try with this angle, which is really should be 30, 30. Um, or try this angle, which is less. Maybe this is maybe 20 and maybe this is 40. Not sure exactly, actually that looks more like 50. Um, well, looks like 45. <laughs> okay, and then maybe you can flip it the other way. So maybe this angle becomes high, this becomes low. Okay, now I need more room. Um, and working big is actually good. So do as many as you want, it doesn't matter. I'm not giving you any yeah, I would say try at least three different angles. Um, one, again, the standard one. Uh, cross your lines, that's a nice, it's always nice. Now I'm being a little lazy, I'm not moving um, the paper. Uh, so I'm, you see, I'm bending the wrist, which is not great because it's so much easier to do lines always going this way, back and forth, left to right. Uh, so then another angle again could be low here, high here. So don't do too extreme an angle um, because things are that. And then maybe, yeah, you can suggest a little bit of a, of a depth or transparency. So, but your front will still be a little bit darker, right? Um, okay, so now we do the opposite. And I'll, in a moment, I'll tell you why I don't want you to do extreme angles, even though, well, you know, you can look at your object and say, okay, how much can I turn it? I mean, of course I could do that angle, right? This is almost a square, but it's not a square. And what you have to get right now, it's not a square at all because you can see a little bit of these sides and I'll show you in a moment how it, it can be a square. Um, but for fun, you could also try, okay? In general, it's less useful for design to have such crazy angles because you know, you're know you hiding everything. Um, so stick to, the, stick to the middle, I guess, because you're trying to show, you're not trying to show how good you are at drawing crazy angles. You're trying to show your object, right? If it is an object, um, if it is a product. 
Okay, so this might be some with three different angles, okay? Uh, and now what I don't want you to do is to do this, which is of course, people do it all the time. So you do a square and then you project this way, meaning you do this kind of thing, or maybe like this kind of thing, which looks more real. And of course, if you did the same length, this would be really weird looking, so you could have it, but this is still impossible. Um, okay, that is impossible. I can draw it, it's possible to draw, but it's not possible for you to see. And that is because as soon as you um, start turning the cube a little bit, there's just no way that that view is going to remain a true square, okay? And I'm just gonna show you now in a moment if I can. So let's see, yeah. So what happens if, if I can see this, I can definitely not see. By the way, the camera is one eye, right? We have two eyes, but that doesn't really matter much for all practical purposes. You know, at this distance, we, it, it, the camera is a fair approximation of our eyes. Um, not so when we get closer and also, of course, not so in terms of seeing three-dimensional because we have two eyes. So we have binocular stereoscopic vision. Um, so in other words, we see in 3D all the time, unless you only have one eye or, you know, unless of course you, if you're blind. But so if you draw this square first and then you draw this to the sides, well, see what happens. As soon as I, if then I would have to match those guys on the side, but look, maybe I can match two. But now if I match those two on the side, on the right side, you can see that my original square, and I can, let's see if I can leave the lines visible here. Um, so in other words, I can match the right side, but look how your original square now is completely off. That's just not possible. Okay, so stay away from drawing views of the cube um, like this, whether it's, you know, whether it's the top of the cube, like whether you place the cube like this and try to show the side. So meaning, you know, if I have a square that's perfectly squared this way, and then I go like this, right? That's also not good, right? It just does not exist. Um, so get away from that. Um, and you can try with your own eyes. If I look at this now straight and I'm pretending the camera is my eyes, I just, there is no way that I can see the other two sides. As I turn it, neither of one is actually a square anymore, right? That's not a square, I mean, it's slightly it might be a rectangle if I keep if I keep the top and the bottom perfectly hidden, then it might become a rectangle, but it's definitely not a square. Okay. And um, and the only way that you could see two sides is actually now something that I cannot show with the camera, but I'm gonna draw you a picture because I just discovered it today, because I discovered that this cube is perfect for the effect. Because I have one eye with the camera, if I move this towards the camera, it's still just one view of a square, right? But interesting enough, if I now bring this to my eyes and I bring it really close, you know when you try to cross your eyes? It's really cool because actually now I can see both, let's say the right side and then I can see the left side, it's amazing. Um, the way this looks now in my view is something like this. The square in the front, this square actually has become a very narrow rectangle because all I can see, let's see. Yeah, it's actually a perspective of the cube. It's a very bizarre perspective, but it looks like this. And that's because now the cube um, let's see if I can explain. The cube is now, my eyes are here somewhere and one eye is there, right? So they're looking this way and they're looking this way and I'm able to see both sides, one with each eye. And another trick, um, so anyway, that's an extreme case. I mean, you're not gonna go around, right? Trying to look at things. Um, 
Another thing that you can test to see how cool it is that we have so-called binocular, ocular means of the eye, um, and by means two, is that because we have two eyes, we see two pictures of everything. And one way to quickly test that is to do this. And then, or to close if you can, one eye. And you can see the finger jumping left to right. It's not moving, of course, but the image of it is moving. So, um, so test that, okay? Or you can try with a pencil, okay? Close one eye and then the other, and it's gonna go boop, boop. It's gonna go doop, 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 doop like that. Also, if you close one eye, it's actually your, your sense of 3D goes away. So it's a little hard to grab things. Okay, a long story to try to avoid drawing squares for views of the cube that are more than just one view. If you just have one view like this, that's fine. But if you have two or three, none of this is ever going ever, ever going to be a square. Okay, um, so now perhaps I can go back to the sketch, I mean, to the official drawing. And you could play around, you know about contrast, right? You probably have heard of that. So maybe you can do a few sketches that are small, a few sketches that are big. So, you know, maybe, and if you don't erase, by the way, don't erase, just, just leave, just correct. Like, okay, this line is wrong. Maybe it's a little steep. Maybe it needs to be a little flatter. Just 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 go over it okay so maybe that's um oh another thing is that if the cube is sitting on the ground like that you always want to have one set of lines vertical so try to always match your line to that because if you do it at an angle it means that it's either on a on a on an inclined plane on a slide for example right like that. Okay, now none of these lines is actually vertical relative to my drawing, okay? So it means that it's it's somewhat on a different plane. Um, and you could try that for fun, but otherwise always keep one set going vertical, right? So you could, you could for fun, just do that, you know. Although now I'm probably getting ahead and I probably shouldn't, but I like see I get carried away because it's fun. Um, so more or less, I managed to do the, the same. Um, but don't be afraid, yeah, to move the um, to move the paper around. So again, summarizing one with the same angles, the other perhaps um, you know with one angle that's shallow, the other angle that's a little steep. So that means these. This length gets shortened a little bit. Always just keep your lines parallel, okay? Always parallel, meaning that's parallel to this. And again, parallel means that the lines are not meeting, okay? They're not meeting there. They're just gonna stay, um, they're gonna stay separate from each other. Um, now, you know, the proportions may not be absolutely perfect, but this pencil is getting a little, um, there was something else, now I forgot, but um, yeah, see, sometimes it's hard to avoid perspective. My So, um, yeah, I find that if I draw the first line and then I move the paper to match it, it's a little easier. Yeah, you see, when I do it like this, again, I'm working from my wrist. It's a little harder, but sometimes if the drawing is small, it is convenient, right? As opposed to, again, what you want to do when you draw lines in front of you, left to right, is to keep your arm really, really straight out, okay? As much as you can, at least your forearm and your pencil. Um, 
in your hand, right? Now, some people have different ways of holding it. So I'm not going to say you must hold it like this, but there is a certain uh, functionality of holding it like this, you know, in a grip that is like a little try, try catcher there, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's why moving the paper can help. Okay, so I'm not trying to, um, the nice contrast here is of course that these lines are nice and straight, right? Perfect, whereas the lines of our drawings are, you know, a little more interesting in a way or just a little less um, uh, strictly drawn, right? And, you know, things can overlap. Just, just have fun with it. Again, perspective, go away perspective. It's really hard. Um, so, so maybe after you've done a few, you can kind of go back and say, oh, maybe I want to like highlight one or darken one. So maybe let's see. And, and you know, if, if it's not quite right, you can, you can adjust it. Um, the cube is really an amazing, an amazing shape. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to share as much as I can later in the semester with, with, uh, well, we're going to do a project that's all on the cube and then we're going to draw it in perspective too. But, um, you could try this, you could try, oh, okay. How many angles can I do? So look at this. Okay. Remember. If you bring this lower, this goes higher, okay, and vice versa. So, right? So there is some ratios. This is convenient because everything is the same length, right? So this is one, this is one, and this is one. But here, this may be, you know, maybe 8.8 .8 as opposed to one on this side um, in terms of the proportions. Um, So again, you know, maybe maybe an extreme one, but you can see immediately some things don't quite. Yeah, small is hard. I wish we could, well, we could, but this happens not to be the case, but we could draw on really big pieces of paper or you could practice um, by drawing maybe just one cube on one sheet, okay? Just for fun. And that would be an option too, right? Let's say you want to do one really big one if you feel like it, and then you fill the rest of the page with um, with uh, with smaller ones. Okay. There, I made a little bit of change there. Um, you can slow it down to make it a little more precise, right? So now I'm going to be a little more focused and especially there is something about muscle mem uh, movement memory in this case not so much muscle but if i if i draw a line like this and then i just keep you know even before i draw the second line if i go like this there over it like a dry run on top of it then i'm gonna you know i'm gonna remember that movement rather my arm is gonna remember it um okay so that's that's the other thing you could do. So maybe, you know, maybe you may put some. Ah, see, it's easy to get <laughs> carried away without, uh, yeah, focusing enough. Um, you know, maybe you want to build a baby cube. Although I'm getting ahead of myself again inside another cube. It doesn't look so good when you try to wingle like this, but um, you know, maybe I should have done it so there would be half of that cube like that. Um, okay, so just practice. I'm going to send you links um, to other videos that have also um, uh, basically the same introduction to cubic shapes, which, which again, later on, we'll do the uh, the the goldfish the goldfish box okay but for now this this is this is pretty good so just do as many as i don't know six eight twelve cubes i don't know um as many as you want okay don't 
don't write all my little weird things just write whatever you, i mean sketch whatever you want okay and just very quickly i'm going to show you a few cool things um because we're going to sort of work with them later this is a cube that um my teacher from high school invented this is actually 3d printed with a little um fishing line hinge and what it did was it, it came up with that shape and then he he connected many of them together to make uh, this kind of thing, which is a transformable chain that transforms into another cube. So it's a triangular shape like that. And it becomes a cube, pretty cool. And it just keeps rotating like that. Um, so we'll have a chance to build this. Um, this other cubic gadget that fits into a cube rather, it's called, I think it's called a Brockhart um, joint. This is just uh, to keep it together. Um, and it's a pretty nice shape because it just keeps, keeps turning like that. And uh, I think that's it. Forget if there was another cool cubic thing. Um, no, okay. All right, so actually let's leave the cubes as the last frame. Okay, so this is it, this is number three and the next one will be my, um, I forget which one that is. Okay, bye-bye. I'll see you at the next one. <laughs>